Hey everybody, it's me, John Caspi, and today we're covering Airbrush 102. Let's get it started with our good old intro splash. Here we go. Alright, I just realized my audio is on. Luckily, it is not on so that you hear it. Let me make sure it go press mute. Okay, give me one second. Woohoo! Tech stuff, tech stuff, tech stuff. There we go. I fixed it. Super easy. Barely an inconvenience. All right. So, what's up, folks? It's me, John Caspian. We are learning the four Bs of airbrushing today. You're going to learn how to base coat with an airbrush. Not much to it, but want to show you how. Uh, you're going to learn how to do batches. You're going to learn how to coat big things. This being a prime example of what not to do. Um, and then you're going to learn uh, blending. Just a little bit of blending, not too much. But let's go ahead and get into it. I'm going to adjust my camera here. Um, all right. Yeah. Ready? Going down. There we go. All right. So that's what we're working on today. Got our regular brush. That's A-OK. -okay. Brushes are fine. They're OK. But we can do so much with an airbrush. For example, if we do a light coating of an airbrush, we get something like that. And I will adjust that focus so you can see it. Perfect. That's a nice little mustard green on a Nurgle Plague Champion. He's cool. What's up, Damon? What's up, Chris? Welcome to the stream. Thanks for joining me today. We also got this guy. It's pretty cool. And then this one, which is a the same color but more heavy on the coating. You can see that difference, huh? So these are both on top of white. And then I put a full base coat on this guy right there. And a, and a mostly full base coat on the other guy. Isn't that cool? All right, so base coating. The whole point of the airbrush, being as powerful as it is, is for speed and efficiency and to do things that it just takes too much time for other things to do. Um, so to get a solid base coat, and I'll show you this Nurgle Champion that I painted in 20 minutes between the base coat and then all this this work so far, I've done it in 20 minutes. Now this is not a full full uh, three color yet, and I haven't fully done them up. But even for 20 minutes, that's not bad. I timed myself. I said from the moment I put the airbrush onto it, and that's including about three minutes to get the airbrush done. So that's pretty cool. Not bad for speed, huh? Uh, so base coats. When you're priming, I recommend using our good old Steinal Res, which is right here. It is awesome. You can also do it with a brush, which is really cool. You don't have to have an airbrush to use it. Uh, a lot of folks recommend using it with a brush, which is awesome. Um, so you base coat with some sort of a gray. Uh, you could base coat with black. Uh, make sure that it is a primer, that it's meant to be a primer. Don't. You could spray a regular old black on top of an unprimed model. Um, so for instance, I could try doing this guy in some sort of black for a primer, but the primer is not what I'm talking about today. I'm talking about the base coats. So um, we have these guys who are unprimed, and we're going to prime them first, and then we're going to base coat. And we're going to show you how to batch things real quick. Real easy. So starting off, got the airbrush. It's empty. It's a little clean out. It's a little bit messy in there, but that's okay. Got the nozzle and the needle right there in the front. You can see it pretty well. I'll make sure not to turn it over while I'm actually using it, but I want to be able to show you guys really easy. Uh, when you are going to do blending later, there's two things you need. Um, the one is I was just looking at and holding it in my hand. And, of course, you put it down for one second. Retarder medium. You're going to want that to slow down the drying of the paints. Um, that also works with brush blending, two brush blending as well. So, um, let's get our Steinal Resin there and then quickly uh, coat over these guys. And in fact, yeah, 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 we're going to do that. So, got my Steinal Res here. I'm going to shake it up. Tell me how y'all doing today. How's everything going? We're learning how to airbrush. We're, uh, whether you have a dual action or a single action, the important part is um, 
making sure your technique is right because it doesn't matter if you have a single action or dual action. Some folks do have single action, and that's great. So a single action as opposed to a double action, to remind everybody from 101, is single action, you just press it, and it's usually a, a trigger. So a trigger would be pressing it back, and then it releases air and paint at the same time. And this dual action is you press down, and then when you pull back is when you get your... Uh, that's when you get your... Right. So you see here... And pulling back with putting the paint out. So we are good to go. We're going to add the sun res and we're going to quickly base coat these guys. Then we're going to get the paint out. Oh, uh, you can also join us on YouTube and Twitch. Uh, we are over there as well. Uh, you can see on the bottom right here next to the logo, it says Gigabytes TV. That's what you search for in YouTube. Uh, so it's youtube.com slash gigabytes TV YouTube, or twitch.tv slash gigabytes TV. Uh, so first spray. That's a nice even one. Let's hold the model up and go to town. I got this guy, I wanna make sure I got it just right. Uh, so, nice even coats, a little bit further away. The PSI is probably gonna need to be a little bit higher, but even then, with the low PSI that we got here, you can already see a difference in the prime. Um, I think we're only around eight PSI at the moment, which is pretty low. Uh, we probably need to pump it up a little bit more but this stuff is absolutely phenomenal anyway, the Stino Res, so you don't have to worry too much about it. Already going on great. I guess I can skip right to the batching part if we want to. So with batching, with priming and base coating and whatnot, uh, you want to make sure that the colors you're using, um, for instance, if you're doing blue, you can do all of the different colors that are close together. Um, so on him, you know, you do his base coat, and then if you're going in with the airbrush on something else, look at that, already gray, almost completely gray. And the cool thing about being able to turn it upside down is getting the details. You see that underneath details? I'm just gonna, bam, details covered up. Perfect, he's all done. Next guy, bam, same guy, another 30 seconds and he's done as well. Uh, so for instance, if you're doing uh, blues, you know, do all of the one type of airbrushing that you need to do all at once. So in this case, we're priming first. And then when we're done with the priming, then we're going to jump into doing a uh, an effect of some sort. So for instance, uh, you want to do a weapon effect, like a plasma. You can easily do a plasma. And then make sure you do it for all of your guys. And I'll show you with my Skitari over here. We're painting our... Uh, kill team sets right now almost done get a little from up top bam not too shabby at all almost ready to paint pretty much a couple of little spots hitting there and you can even hit the bottom of the base if you wanted to uh, not necessary though and bam that's done so two guys about a minute 30 seconds each ish Maybe a minute each. That's fine. Uh, you can be as detailed as you want or not. You don't have to have it perfectly coating, which is great. Um, so, Thomas, that's probably your compressor. What kind of compressor do you got? Uh, you need a compressor. Uh, let's see, an eighth horsepower is what I got going on, and then a good regulator. Uh, and it shouldn't have a problem staying too low. Mine's at 8 right now. It's 8 to 10. Uh, and it's staying, staying pretty good. The regulator is what keeps the air at the same amount. Uh, the tank is not going to do wonders for you. Um, but yeah, you might be able to replace, ma replace the regulator. Um, so we got that primed and then we're going to base coat. So the base coat, like I said before, it can be a light base coat with one type of color, um, or you can heavily base coat it. So as you can see here from the prime, this is a light amount of one color and the heavy amount and the full amount of that color. So you get to choose, uh, what a lot of people do is they will put, and I'm going to talk while I am getting the white paint ready, uh, they will do the, the Zenithal lighting, which is putting white uh, from directly above the model to simulate um, that effect. And then, once you do that, all you got to do is put on a sort of an ink wash. So an ink wash is basically going to be um, a very slight amount of any pigment. Uh, so with this one, it would be just putting that amount evenly on the model and letting that Zenithal pre-lighting do its magic, which it is absolutely phenomenal. 
All right, so the gray is washed out. One more spritz there, make sure we get it out so we can transfer over to the next color. I'm doing this off camera right now just because I don't want all the models getting wet just in case something happens. Good, all right. Perfect. And next one coming up. So what do we want to do now? There, that is out. Uh, we have these lovely things you need to buy a lot of Q-tips. If you don't got Q-tips, I don't know what you're doing. Because Q-tips are the best. By the way, if you live in Atlanta and you don't play, if you're not playing Dust, I don't know what's wrong with you. The goat says to play Dust. Call him Giorgio. He's a good goat. Dust is awesome. Uh, Nick Bogart is starting a league. Join our Atlanta Dust community. Search it up on Facebook, Atlanta Dust, and you can see it. Um, it's going to be awesome. It's rocking. Cool people doing cool stuff. Shooting things. Got a little bit more there in the tube. The one thing that's tough on the stream is switching the colors quickly enough. All right, so we're going to go with a green. And for this, I believe I'm going to use my leaf green, which is this color. It's a reaper, it's a leaf green. I'm gonna put one thing of uh, thinner in here first, so airbrush thinner. And then I'm gonna put the leaf green in there. Oh, I said I would do the zenithal, didn't I? Yep, 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 yep. This is all a lie, I'm gonna do white scar instead of leaf green. Where is that beautiful white scar? There it is. White scar air. And we're going to do a little zenithal lighting up in here. Boom. Shake it up. Um, but yeah, Thomas, make sure you're using a retarder. So something like this. If you're using that, then you are good to go. All right. Dumping a little bit of that white in there. Not too much. There we go. Perfect. So once you put the two things in there, it's like this. We got to make sure we put the hand there and then gently pull back the trigger. So you're seeing this. And that is mixing in the medium or the uh, thinner with that. And my PSI is too low. So this is speckling. So I'll show you this here. Speckling. Not enough pressure. That doesn't look too bad on the screen, but in person it doesn't look great. And let's try it again. That's a nice even amount. Not too bad at all. Yeah, that's great. All right, so uh, let's get this guy. He's a gray, and we're just going to go gently on the top, all from one angle. And it can be very subtle. And look at that effect. I don't know. You can't see it in uh, on the camera necessarily as good as in person. Let's be a little more dramatic with it. In person, it looks absolutely phenomenal. We want to be a little dramatic to make sure that the camera shows off. There we go. Something like that. And that's a little bit dramatic just for the sake of the uh, for the camera. But it works really well to pre-shade things and that is a zenithal light and that's super easy to do with an airbrush really really quick really easy um, if you're wondering look up some examples that people have done um, it's not necessary to use an airbrush to do it but it is pretty convenient I'll do a more extreme example there There we go and that is a zenithal setup and it looks like something happened with my screen. I don't know what, but it might have been my webcam deciding to uh, crap out on me. So while that is frozen there, um, and I'll be talking while I try to fix that, uh, I will go ahead and clean out the white here from 
from the airbrush. So I don't need that anymore. Um, so let's move on to big things, assuming I can get my webcam fixed. And big things are the coolest thing about an airbrush to me because I have struggled for a longest time with, um, I'm making sure you can still hear me here. Yeah, okay, my audio is still on, even though my video... Oh, no, we're good. We're back. It is corrected. Um, so, the big things are the, the one thing that I absolutely love about having an airbrush, and it's something that I recommend when you get an airbrush, and it should be when, not if. Um, and I'm going to be doing a dust model. I'll show you what it looked like before, and then what it looks like, um, or what it's going to look like now after we do it. Hey, David! Watching. Get this in here. Uh, so we got the, we got the tip here, and we're going to brush it away, like we mentioned last time. There we go. Oops. Gentle thumb. Got to use a gentle thumb. It looks great. You don't want to put pressure on that needle. It's very fragile and it can bend. So don't don't do that. Not good. All right. Now it's time for the next thing. So uh, vehicles are the best. They're big. They can look absolutely amazing, especially doing camo patterns. I'll show you that. Bam. So that is the dust. I want to say it's a Mao tank. Move these models. Show you that. It's beautiful glory. There we go. That paint job is hand brushing. And it's not the most phenomenal thing in the world. Uh, we really can see the the marks of the brush doing stuff. And the toughest thing is actually getting all of the parts with the metal that we wanted to. So I even didn't do the metal until, uh, until today because it was a pain in the butt. All right, there we go. A couple more bits out of the uh, airbrush. That white really shows off with other paints. And then we're going to put our thinner in. and then go to town. So thinner, where are you? There it is. Stuff is not the most beautiful smelling in the world, but it's all right. One. Just one, I'm using uh, MSP paints for this. Uh, they're pretty solid. So mountain stone is what I'm using here. It's a nice solid gray. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put up the pressure just a little bit, so the coverage is better. Uh, in a larger area. All right, and the paint consistency is like skim milk. So you don't want it to be too thick. You don't want it to be runny like water. Um, and so that is about what you want it to be like, which is great. So it's looking good already. Gonna mix in the paints and then we're ready to go. There we are. Okay, I'll show you a test on here. There we go. And that is the nice gray. And let's go ahead and get this all the way around uh, the hull, and then we're going to do the tracks separately. So let's get to town. Big things is amazing. So if you're not playing Lord of the Rings, I think you really should consider it because we have a very active community for Lord of the Rings miniatures. I actually get that on the camera. There we go. So uh, look up the Atlanta LOTR League. Join it. Get some miniatures from Gigabytes Cafe. Now, as we get further away, we're going to have to release a little bit more paint onto the surface, which is fine. Well, look at that nice, even coat. And even coats are awesome. There we go. So I'll show you side by side with the painted side and the new matte side. Looks phenomenal. 
and that is all done in a matter of seconds. So you don't need to worry about getting your paintbrush, having it perfect, and trying to get a perfect even coat, because this main coat from your airbrush is going to be pretty darn even right off the bat. Look at that. That's a beautiful thing. If you see any uh, patchiness there, like in the corner, um, that just needs to air dry, and if it is splotchy at all, then you just go back over it with another coat. And you can do this in a couple of thin coats. Bam. So, right there, off the bat, I've now base coated the big thing in just a couple of seconds, uh, and then we can even go even further and get the hull, or the turret of the tank, and this is at the time this sort of red, this kind of crimson red here, um, and I'm going to alter that. And we're going to make it gray. So we're not going to hit the star right now. We're going to start off with the top at the moment. Oh, I still got plenty of paint in there. And we're going to go side to side. And Administratum Gray, uh, Vallejo makes good gray, P3, Army Painter. Uh, Army Painter paints will need to have a little bit more flow improver or um, thinner in them. They're a little bit thicker. Not as thick as P3, I think, but... Now, if you're wondering why I'm painting gray over the red, I want to do more red accents. Look at that super solid. Um, if I'm not hitting the things like that, just because it's going to be a different color, but in terms of a base coat, that is absolutely fun. That's great. Yeah, if you've got questions, put them in here. Absolutely. So, I'm going to do this as an example of what not to do. When you're using this dual action, do not I'm going to have to wipe that away. Don't pull all the way back and do that where you can really see a very thick coat on there. Don't do it. It needs to be thin, so when the, you put it on, the difference is a little more subtle. Otherwise, a thick coat is just gloopy. You can see it uh, clumping up there already. Uh, and no, no fun. No fun. You want a nice, thin coat? And the reason for the thin coats is that you can put multiple layers without noticing a big difference. I'm using a 0.3 millimeter nozzle. This is from the kit that we have at Gigabytes Cafe. If you want to get an airbrush from Gigabytes Cafe, I, I recommend you do that. We carry Grex, which are absolutely phenomenal. Uh, the compressor is awesome. I love it. Bam, look at that. So right in a couple of minutes... I've already got the corners, or the corners of the hull there on the tank, the top part of the turret, the side. Uh, if I were to go to town full speed on this thing, I would say I could get a, maybe 20 minutes and I could get a full base coat of the main thing. And now, let's go on to the blends, which is the final element that we need to learn today. Uh, blending, uh, you're going from larger areas to smaller areas, and you always want to work up or work down. If you're working up from a brighter color, um, then you work down from the bright color. Uh, so for this, we're going to be using plasma effect. Um, and I showed you one of my Skatari dudes, and he has a brush on plasma effect, as you can see there. Looks pretty good. Not bad. That entire model... Uh, Besides the base coat, uh, not base coat, what am I saying? Besides the primer, it was using a brush, not an airbrush. But we're going to use the other guy with an arc rifle, and we're going to go to town on him and see. So let's get a different paint in here. We used, for the first one, we used, um, where's my blue? Where's my blue? I was, I was literally just looking at it. There we go. Um, we have two dark blues. We have a void blue and a sapphire blue. Um, and you notice the colors here on the MSP are a little bit different because it's a different kind of colors. But I like to have that really dark blue underneath. It's a very, very, very light layer. Um, and what you do is you call what's called uh, origin source lighting, OSL. 
Um, and that's basically saying that if you have a torch, you're doing the lighting from the torch, um, not the lighting from above. Uh, so in this case, we are going to light it from the actual rifle. Uh, and this is going to be an arc rifle from the Ad Adept Mechanicus. Here we go. Yeah, that's good. All right. So this dude, get the tank out of the way. Thank you, Mao. You did good. He's got his arc rifle right there. Now, normally I would be showing this after the whole thing is done, but I'm going to show you now just because. Uh, so it emanates from a center point, as all light does, and then it gets gradually weaker based on the uh, law of inverse square. Uh, which says that for every two feet, it gets four times darker. Um, so the four times drop off for every two feet. Uh, and you can look up inverse square law and look up exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, so in this case, we're just going to do a very slight dark blue onto parts of him. And this is super slight. So if you don't notice it on the screen, that is okay. It's not meant to be like hitting in the face. There we go. You can see just the subtle blue there all around. Now that may be a little overdoing it, but you can always come back on and do your, do your uh, you know, coat of your weapon. But I think that's that's pretty solid for just having. Um, for just having a, a slight amount of the color there, because when you're looking at it in person, it's not as not as dramatic of a difference. It might look a little dramatic on the screen. Um, and then I'm going to immediately go out. I'm using my distilled water, and I'm dumping out what was left in there. And I'm immediately going into the brighter blue. Um, and what I would normally do is completely clean out the one color before the other one but I don't have to right now because the blend and colors is so close, which is why I say when you're doing blends, go ahead and have them uh, fairly close in color so that when you go up, uh, you don't have to fully clean out the entire airbrush 100% um, because you're not doing a dramatic shift. Um, it's not necessary. Some people will just because they want a nice clean blend, but in my case, I don't need a super clean all right, that's done. And that's good. All right, the next one's ready. This is going to be a very gentle blend. I can test on the surface before I get going just to make sure it's a very light amount and then put it on. And I can get really close if I want to. There we go. So, as you can see there... That's going to be the, the primary basing for the uh, a higher effect. And I can go ahead and get that lighter effect for you. Um, that is a pretty darn good blend. Just by just eyeballing it in person especially, um, that looks like a lighting effect, which is great. So a super dark color going on um, as a very thin coat is not going to show off the full pigment of the paint. Uh, so that means that basically that the blend is going to look more natural when you put a very thin layer uh, as that bottom one uh, because your color is going to end up looking basically have this, having the same value. Um, that looks pretty darn good. Pretty happy with that. Where's that super bright blue? I got it over here. This one, <sighs> sky blue, 18. So that's the one right above the traditional blue. Looks pretty good. Let's get that in there, get it going.
And then once that's blended on there, all you gotta do is put a very light blue with a mix, maybe with white. Here we go. This one has to be very, very subtle. I'm gonna test a little bit. And then gently Got a little tip dry here. There we go. It's a very gradual effect. clean out that tip okay give me one second here where'd my cleaner go there we go so we got a little bit of a little bit of tip dry there all that means is we were going about five minutes plus without cleaning it off and if you want to avoid that tip drying effect and you want to have more time for your blending if you need that make sure to get the retarder uh, you can also get a flow improver, but that doesn't necessarily help with the time that it takes to dry. It will, uh, but it won't be as a dramatic of an effect as a retarder will. There we go. Nice and good. And the center point. It's my main source. So that is a perfect blend and the only thing that I would do is add a little bit more of the bright blue and the uh, a little couple other spots where the dark blue is coming on the face but overall that's a solid blend color and all I'm doing is taking a wide area with a with a darker color and then a smaller area like that in the center right just like that and the difference ending up something like that. So there you have it, folks. That is your four types of bees that you need to think of when airbrushing. So it is batching, which is getting all your dudes lined up, getting them done on the same color before you switch over to new type of paint. Um, and then big things, super easy to do, big things on airbrush. You can cover a large amount and have a really nice, even amount of uh, paint. Look at that drying there, splotchy. Yeah, you want to make sure you're doing a very thin coat because that I'll have to redo that for sure. Um, and then blending. So blending just like this guy, this arc rifle. This effect in person in my eyes looks really even more dramatic. Um, and you can always do it as you like, the amount that you like. Uh, but it looks pretty good to me. And that's it, folks. So that's all I got for today. Thanks for joining me. Grab a, uh, an airbrush, Gigabytes Cafe. Uh, you can check us out. In Marietta, so look us up, Gigabytes uh, Cafe in Marietta. Uh, um, check out the store. We got so many events going on, uh, leagues. Uh, we got Kill Team League that has 24 players in it, which is awesome. I wish I could be there for that. Um, yeah, that's it. Thanks, y'all. Have a great day. Oh, 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 oh,